Hey guys, I'm Chantal with Growing Up Without Borders. In today's video, I am going to share with you something super important if you're considering coming to live in New Zealand or you want to move to New Zealand, and that is the cost of living here in this beautiful country of New Zealand. Make sure you watch to the end though, because at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you a tool that you can go online and you can calculate and put in all these different details. And it's fabulous. It's absolutely free to use. And you're going to want to do that if you're considering living here in New Zealand. We are Growing Up Without Borders, a family of five traveling to every country in the world. It all began with a five week trip to Europe back in 2013, which then led to us traveling to now six continents and 98 countries. We've been blessed to spend many months here in New Zealand and explored everything from the very top to the very bottom. Are you ready to join the journey? Let's go. Alright, let's get started. Number one is housing. Housing is such a big one and well in New Zealand it is expensive to buy a home. It is a it's not it's not considered a cheap country in any way. So an average cost of a house here in New Zealand is gonna be anywhere between six hundred to a million dollars depending on where you live. Of course if you are coming to work um, you're probably considering coming to one of the hubs which would be Auckland or Wellington and if that's the case well the pricing of the homes are of course a little bit higher than other areas maybe let's say Hamilton Cambridge or Rotorua area but on all in all an average cost of a house here in New Zealand is about maybe uh, around like 700,000 let's just say on average if you're considering renting well renting uh, can anywhere again it depends varies big time if you're going into Auckland you're going to be paying up to 600 a week they go by the week here if you're maybe in the outskirts or a different city it might be you know anywhere between 400 500 so it, it can range quite a bit depending on where you live so interesting enough though they do go by the week versus by the month um, so up to you you can just calculate the way you would like so in New Zealand, one of the things that's amazing is you actually get land with your home. I know in a lot of countries, this is very rare. And for some countries watching, this is normal. Um, for example, if you're in Canada, of course, you're going to get land. But in most European countries, to get land is very, very special. So to have a garden and not only have a garden, but here in New Zealand, the earth is very fertile. So when you're planting a garden, it's going to flourish and grow and you get a lot more of a mild climate. So you have more chance of your fruits and stuff lasting longer. And it just it grows differently than in certain countries, especially if you're on the North Island, it's all volcanic land and that that soil basically grows so good so just as an example this man where we're staying he has like a small yard but if you can imagine he has all these fruit trees it's absolutely crazy um so some of the trees that he has here he has a lemon tree an orange tree an apple tree a plum tree a peach tree he even has grapevines growing in his little greenhouse and then he has this huge garden and in the garden he has all these vegetables and cabbage and celery and tomatoes and beans and like it's just unbelievable potatoes carrots it goes on and on and on and he even has this thing called an ugly fruit tree ugly fruits are a combination between an orange and a grapefruit it's really yummy and uh yeah it's just amazing so you have to consider your quality of life you know if you're in a northern uh, america's kind of country well your produce and ability to plant a garden is going to be a lot smaller because you have about six months of winter, right? So it's a lot different. So those are all things to consider into your factor and your cost of living and such like that. When we travel, we often use a website. I like it to use it all the time. Before I go to a country, I'll, I'll Google like the cost of living. And one website that comes up all the time is called Numbeo. And you can go in there and you can plug in, you know, what, what country currency you want to use. And in there, it'll tell you the cost of a Big Mac, the cost of a liter of milk, the cost of a kilo of potatoes and all that kind of stuff. And you can get a really good idea and feel for what the cost of living is there. It'll even tell you the cost of living in a city center versus out, you know, all that stuff. So it's really interesting to use. I use it all the time. I'm not sure 
how accurate it is, but it's a great tool to use and I'll put the link below. Okay, number two, you guys, is food. When we first arrived here in New Zealand, we were really fortunate because when we rented a car, the guy at the car company, he's like, guys, this is the way it works here in New Zealand. Number one, you have pack and saves. That is the cheapest. Then you've got uh, countdown and then new world and he kind of gave us an example of the different stores and, and such what to expect and I'm so glad he did because when you first arrive somewhere you're like mm, where do I go shopping and stuff and what is the best value and such and where can I get this where can I get that now we know the grocery stores and like the back of our hand after being here for one year uh, but the the pricing in the grocery stores surprisingly varies quite a bit because they oftentimes you know of course it's an island so a lot of things get imported in they do produce a lot of their own produce as well but things like avocados for example in other countries you might get those all year round and it can it kind of has a stable price here in New Zealand the prices actually fluctuate quite a bit which in a way forces you if you're budget money conscious to eat seasonally because you're not going to pay an extraordinary amount for an avocado or for a pepper and then in other seasons you're going to buy more of that and less of the, the other right so it kind of varies but yeah you do tend to eat seasonally which is interesting. Um, but on average, let's see, um, okay, so a liter of milk is gonna be anywhere from around $2. These are all New Zealand pricing as well. Uh, 700 grams of cheese can be anywhere between 10 to $15. Bread is gonna be about 350. A uh, bottle of wine can be anywhere from 10 to $20. Those are like a, a bottle of, you know, wine, if you're going for a good one, you know, you might wanna go a little higher. I know in Europe, like in certain countries in Spain and in different countries like that, you can buy a really good bottle of wine for three euros and it's gonna be like impeccable. Uh, so it's just a little bit higher here. So on all in all, we're a family of five and we spend anywhere between 300 to 400 a week on our groceries. So is it high, low? I guess it's all relative, right? With your income and such like that. So, but it's not ranked a cheap country as far as food goes. All right, number three is transportation. So transportation here in New Zealand is interesting because if you're coming to live in the city center, you're gonna be okay with getting around with a bus pass and taking the local transportation. Is it easy? Mm, like the, the distance are further, right? So in Europe, you have cities that are quite concentrated and you've got, you know, the trams and the trains and boats and everything to get around very easily. Here, the distances are, are maybe a little bit further versus taking a car in but it really depends on where you live. So if you're going to be in Auckland and you're living, let's say in the outskirts, sometimes you can just take a ferry in and you're right in the downtown. So really just look it up where you're gonna be living. But on all in all, if you're gonna be living in the outskirts or you're living in a remote area, definitely you're gonna to wanna to buy a car. Just in general, you're gonna to wanna to buy a car in New Zealand because the distances to go anywhere is far and it takes a longer time than you think and the roads aren't like it's not easy peasy and there's not many transportations between two cities that run like on a regular so to get a car here though there are sites like one site's called trade me you can go on there and you can get a really inexpensive car so it's not a big deal to register it it's not a big deal either it's quick easy peasy and the registrations for your license would be about maybe anywhere probably around hundred dollars per year so reasonable the other thing is your cost of gas. Cost of gas in New Zealand, if you're comparing it to Europe, it's relative, so it's about $2 a liter. I know if you're thinking from the US, it's gonna be, you know, that's considered maybe high. So a, you know, mid-size kind of vehicle, SUV maybe, is gonna cost you about $100 uh, to fill it up. So that's the cost of gas. Now let's move on to do, 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 restaurants. Mm, eating out this is a fun thing so in New Zealand there's actually quite a good variety surprisingly things like Indian takeaway are like reasonable compared to other countries I mean I'm comparing to like okay I gotta say who I'm comparing to Europe in general and things like that because if you're comparing of course to like India or if you're comparing to Thailand or stuff of course of course it's higher um, but a meal here let's say an average plate like a good nice meal is anywhere between you know 20 30 dollars uh, a cup of coffee is going to run you about four dollars and um, a beer if you're at a restaurant it's going to be anywhere maybe between eight nine dollars or so so um, so it's not cheap to eat out definitely not but it's good there's a lot of variety and there's a lot of beautiful restaurants that you can go and enjoy again once you plug in all your details and you see how much you might earn as income and what you're spending and stuff it might all work out in the end 
there you go. Okay, number five is utilities. So utilities in New Zealand is an interesting one because for us, when we came, we didn't realize that things as simple as internet might not be unlimited. <laughs> I did say it right, it might not be unlimited. So depending on where you stay, um, if you're in a rural area, sometimes the internet has a cap on how much internet you can use. So these are things to consider. Of course, if you're coming to the city center, it's gonna be unlimited, no problem. But if you're traveling, let's say on a weekend and you're going away and you might be streaming a lot of data and stuff like that, those are things to consider. So for us, we have our cell phones and a cell phone plan here, because we are not we are on visitor's visa, so we can't have a full plan. We're paying anywhere between 60 to $80 a month for data. Now this is really high to other countries. So for example, in Europe, I can get for 10 pounds a month, unlimited data all through the European Union, and that's unlimited text, talk, um, you know, the whole thing. So New Zealand just has higher pricing when it comes to data, when it comes to cell phone plans and such like that. It is what it is. Um, the other thing you need to consider, of course, you have your water and your electrical bills and such like that. So that's kind of on average, like similar to other countries. But one thing that's interesting here in New Zealand is that a lot of the homes aren't insulated like you would have in Northern Americas, Northern Europe um, and any cold countries. So their windows aren't insulated like we have in other countries. The insulation in the home isn't the same. And so the homes, they're like super cold in the winter months and people seem to be, they're used to it. So some of the things they do and they don't have central heating. So this central heating thing is a big one. Like not many homes will have central heating. People still plug in these external plug in kind of heaters. Other people have what they call heat pumps. A heat pump is basically like an air conditioning unit like we would have on the wall that heat that pumps out heat. So the reverse of the cool air. Um, a lot of people still put electric blankets in their bed to keep them warm. And a lot of people still will heat up a hot water bottle to bring into bed with them. Like that's just the norm. So this is something to get used to. Of course, some people will heat with a gas, um, with a fire stove. So that's doable as well. You'll see a lot of that. But yeah, it's very rare to have like almost never will you see a furnace with a gas furnace. You just don't see that here with central heating. So something to consider when it comes to your utilities, you might be putting, cranking up the electric bill, trying to keep warm if you come here. So there you go. Number six is shopping. So who doesn't like shopping, right? When you come to New Zealand, don't expect to find the vast selection that you will have in other countries. Like I so miss little things like the makeup stores that I used to go to. And you know, in Europe, you've got so much selection. So you just don't have that here. Um, and of course, everything's imported. So it's not like you'd have in uh, the United States, for example, where you can get designer shoes at a really, really good price. That doesn't happen here. So you are paying higher for a lot of your things that are coming in uh, and the selection is less than you have in other countries. And electronics as well are quite higher. So I'm not sure the percentage, but for example, we've bought a lot of things like phones and laptops since we've been here. And yeah, that you pay actually uh, quite a bit more than you would in other countries. So it is what it is. It's uh, it's a remote uh, area and it's far away and it's islands. And so put two and two together, it's gonna cost more to get it all over here. Um, one thing though that they do have here and that is extremely popular and fantastic, especially for people like us, because when we first arrived to New Zealand, it was winter, we didn't have any winter gear and we were freezing cold. And so they have something called op shops that are called like opportunity shops. They're everywhere in a town, like where we're staying, there's maybe 30,000 people and they might have like three or four op shops. It's crazy. And basically it's all secondhand things and they're all still good quality and you can just get tons of stuff for a great price. So this is fantastic because New Zealand is very environmentally conscious. They're also conscious of, um, well, waste. And so when you think of clothing waste, it's something you never think about. But when you go to countries like Cambodia and you see how they're making it in the factories and you see the amount of clothing waste, it's just crazy. So this is really great to see that they're recycling and it's a great way to get things at a better price if you need to do that. So that's fantastic. Number seven is activities. So here in New Zealand, this is the country that you're going to want to come to for epic, crazy, adventurous activities. It all happens here and it's so much fun. The average cost of an activity, if you're doing like a weekend, you know, getaway and you want to do something fun and epic, you're going to want to consider 
putting aside at least maybe about a hundred dollars that's including if you're doing any kind of tours or anything like that so it's not like in Europe where you can do maybe a boat tour and it's gonna be 20 euros here it's still about a hundred dollars per person New Zealand but there's a ton of things to do here in New Zealand that are absolutely free, including some of their top notch museums. So if you're basically going to go to Wellington, there's the Tipapa Museum, that's free. I couldn't believe it. They also have all these gardens that are free. So the Hamilton Gardens, they're absolutely gorgeous and beautiful and it's all free. All their walks, all their nature walks and all their, uh, what, what you would pay to go to like a reserve and such in other countries, you can go in for free. The beaches are free. Everything is free when it comes to nature and walking. And that's fantastic because there's so many beautiful, great walks to do. So it's, it's great. Um, you can also do things, for example, where when you do a great walk, you bring all your gear and your sleeping bags and stuff and you stay in these little huts and you pay a small fee to stay there. And so it's one of the epic activities and things that you can do when you're here in New Zealand. All right. Moving on to the big one, and that is healthcare. Healthcare is such a big topic because it is such a big expense in so many countries when you have to pay out of your pocket each month healthcare just to be able to go see a doctor. Well, here in New Zealand, it's a universal healthcare. It's included in the taxes, so everybody is covered. There's not one person left out. Everybody can go see a doctor if they need, and that is fantastic. So when you're considering budgeting for healthcare, if you want, you can go private as well. So you can have the option to go private too. So you can pay a small, maybe $100 extra a month, and then you will be able to have that option to be private versus um, going through the public system. So those are just some of the things to consider. So when it all is said and done, you've got to consider what is your overall cost of living when it comes to, let's say, your mental health, when it comes to your physical health, when it comes to things like your lungs, like breathing clean air. All the air here in New Zealand is fresh, clean, not polluted. It's not like, it's just crazy. I mean, we've been to countries where you literally can't open the windows at certain times of the year because you can have, it's hard to breathe. And then you get these alerts on your phone. And so when you experience that, there's also things like your stress level. There's certain countries you arrive in and you literally start to feel the stress. I know I've felt it. Other people have said the same thing. And New Zealand in general is just more of a relaxed pace of life. It's very, like they are always like sweet as. It's just relaxed. The stores close earlier, so the workforce ends up being off earlier, which just naturally makes for a more relaxed environment. There's a lot more nature around you, so that also makes you more less stressed and more relaxed. So there's all those things to consider when it comes to your health, because at the end of the day, you do pay for that in your health, don't you? With the longevity of your life and so on. So those are all things to consider when you're considering your cost of living and moving to New Zealand, let's say. So I'm going to put a link though below because on the government website, if you go here, you can actually plug in all the different things to consider. If it's you and your spouse coming to live with kids or without kids, what type of industry you're in, and then you can go and see all of your expenses and your estimated income. You could toggle over and let's say, say if it's maybe going to be a little less or maybe a little bit more. And at the very end, it basically spits out what is an estimated amount of earnings, what you can maybe be saving, depending on what your expenses are. So this is a great way to plan everything before you come here or before you consider coming to move to New Zealand. So you guys, I hope this video is helpful for you guys to get an idea as to what the price and the cost of living here is in New Zealand. If you have any suggestions, if I've missed anything, please, please, please comment below and let us know. And as always, um, give us a big thumbs up and we'll see you next time. Bye.